Assalamu alaikum everybody. My name is Rida Qadri. I am a grade 12 MYN student and today I will be talking about a sahabiya, Asma binti Omes Razia Tala Anha. She is a role model for all of us, so let's learn a little bit about her. So I'm going to talk about her relationship with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was the sister-in-law of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she was the sister of Maimuna Razia Tala Anha. So she had three sisters, just like I mentioned, Maimuna Razia Ta'ala Anha, and she was the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Lubaba Ibn Haris, whose name is also Um al Fadal, and she's the wife of Abbas Ibn Abdul Muttalib, who is the Prophet's uncle. And her third sister, Salma bint Omes, is the wife of Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, who is also the Prophet's uncle. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to call them the believing sister because they were all married to companions of the Prophet. Now her husband, Jafar ibn Abi Talib, he was the first cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was the son of Abu Talib, who we know is the guardian of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So now I'm going to talk about her migration. She made two migrations in her life, and she was one of the first people who migrated to Abyssinia from Mecca. And she stayed there for 14 years. And then the second migration that she made was from Abyssinia to Medina in her seventh Hijri. And a little story is Umar Azizah Anhu said to her that since they migrated to Medina before her, they are they were closer to the Prophet which made her sad and she went and asked the prophet about it. And he said, he is not closer to me than you. He migrated only once, but you migrated twice. So a lesson we can take out from this is there was a healthy competition among companions for doing good. And we also should strive for doing good deeds. So her children, she had three sons from Jafar Razia Anhu and they were all born in Abyssinia and their names were Muhammad, Abdullah, and on. So how her husband passed away, Jafar Ta'ala Anhu was martyred in the Battle of Mu'ta in 8th Hijri. And the, when the Prophet Sallallahu he was informed about the Shahadat through Wahi, he visited the house of Jaf, Jafar Ta'ala Anhu and consoled the family. And he also made arrangements for food for the grieving family. So another lesson we can take out from this is in case of any death in our community or amongst families, we should help the grieving family by sending them food and helping them out with groceries and anything else they may need. So once Jafar Razia Ta'ala Anhu passed away, um, her, after her husband's death, Abu Bakr approached her for marriage and she accepted it. So she had one son from Abu Bakr Ta'ala Anhu and his name was Muhammad bin Abi Bakr and he was born in 10th Hijri. He was also born during the journey of Hajjat al-Wida and Abu Bakr made a will that his body should be washed by his wife Asma. So now another lesson we can take out is a wife can give ghusl to the deceased husband and vice versa. So if the wife passes away, the husband can give ghusl to the wife as well. And then she got married to Ali ibn Talib ta'ala Anhu. And he was the younger brother of her first husband, Jafar ibn Talib. And he proposed to her and she accepted and they had a son named Yahya. And all of her sons from her previous marriages were all raised by Ali Razia Ta'ala Anhu. So another lesson we can take out from this is at that time, like being divorced or being a widow with, with kids was not looked down upon. And we know like in this day and age, there's a big stigma in our society about having being divorced and having kids and being divorced. So we should really learn from our role models because the best men of that time, the caliphs who proposed and married her, and they also happily took responsibility of her children. And then the martyrdom of Ali Razia Ta'ala Anhu and her death. So after the shahadat of Ali Razia Ta'ala Anhu in 40th Hijri, she stayed sick and passed away peacefully. So she had the honor of marrying the legends of Islam, one martyr and two caliphs. So hopefully we learn some important lessons during this presentation and can take some of the important points and implement them in our own lives.